from the floor. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, we have another presentation. Um, and last but not not least, uh, um, uh, Professor Mark Lavergne, uh, who is uh, who has been stationed in various French um, cultural scientific institutions uh, or over the Middle East and Africa. Um, one of them is a very very uh, prestigious um, uh, institution called CEDEG. It's a uh, French Egyptian Center for Scientific Research and Cooperation, which is based in Cairo, and it's a very respected academic institution. At the same time, it's a very diplomatic. And so many Japanese uh, scholars working on history, working on uh, social uh, history, economy, uh, who, who, are, uh, who have been in touch with, with in the past. Uh, with, with him. So, but uh, Professor Mark Navarini is uh, now Emeritus Professor at the Department of uh, Arab and the Mediterranean Studies, um, the, also Emeritus Head of Research at the National Center for Scientific Research. He will uh, make his presentation uh, on the, the proliferation of terrorism from the Middle East to Africa. So, um, Professor Navarini, um, please. Can, can you oh, can you oh, make microphone on? Um, oh, 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 there's some some problem, some issue. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, very good. Thank you very much for this presentation. Uh, it reminds me of a very uh, um, effective uh, and uh, tense uh, moments that we spent uh, with our Japanese colleagues in Egypt in that time. And um, now I will try to, to confirm or to comment the previous speakers' presentations on, on Libya, on Africa, which were very much uh, informative. So I will start my video. Yes. Yeah. Is the video coming? Yeah. Huh. Good. So I, I, I was remembering, thinking of, of this presentation of uh, an experience that I had back um, over uh, 50 years ago, that was in 69 of the last century, in the south of uh, Algeria, close to Niger and to Libya in an oasis called Janet. And there was an attack by uh, nomads coming from Niger, uh, about uh, 500 kilometers uh, away on camel horses and they were attacking the oasis where I was in, uh, in Janet. And this was um, a kind of um, remembrance of the old times. Uh, one of these last uh, rezu, they called that, attacks against the Tuareg that were controlling this area. So uh, instability in that part of the world is not really new, but um, uh, they were they were looking for food, and uh, it expressed also the artificiality of the borders in Africa. And this is one of the major problems that uh, the Saharan and Sahelian countries are facing today. That uh, those borders that were were drawn by France um, on colonial times uh, are including people that are parts of them farmers in the south and part of them held us in the north, in the desert. And these people of the north, broadly speaking from Mauritania, uh, no, from Mali, Niger, Chad, were excluded from uh, the capital city's um, uh, power taking and they were not given enough, uh, perhaps means to survive or to thrive. They have, uh, so, national budgets were concentrated in the south. And this is one of the uh, main sources of all these um, insurrections that we are facing today. Um, so the main problems are that these countries are run by southern elites, which were formerly under the power of the nomads, of the herders. So there's a complete reversal of power which leads 
this uh, to under development of the north comparatively to the south, which doesn't mean that the south of those countries in the Sahel are very uh, rich, but they are poor uh, in the north and in the south. <clears throat> this is one, of course, um, an aspect of something that is not new on earth. I mean, it reminds us to the uh, fight between uh, Cain and Abel, the, the sons of uh, Adam and Eva. Uh, between the uh, one was can you show your slides hello mark yeah your slides the slides ah you the slides ah i didn't know it was to me to to activate the slides and i don't see the slides myself yeah do you get the slides sure no share screen i i, I don't see them can, can you see Wait. the can you see the slides no, I don't see the slides myself. Wow. Share the screen, please. Do you see them? No. Can you oh. share the screen? Hmm. Side? Do, do you have a slide? Yeah, I, I, I have. I have the slides. Yeah. Oh, you got the okay. slides? For us? Okay. okay yeah, I will. For... I will. Yeah, I will. Yeah. Yeah. Do you get the slides now? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Make it full F5. Yeah. F5. I'm sorry, uh, I'm perhaps too old for all these uh, technicalities. So this is a slide that shows a kind of um, meeting where I was trying to uh, con convince some elders of a village uh, back in Darfur in 2006 uh, to uh, make peace with their neighbors and their sons were acting as uh, criminals, as Janjaweed, that were those who were attacking the villages around. Um, now, uh, these countries, as was said before, are stricken by desertification, climate change, by population growth, and the figures have been mentioned uh, before. So there is this ethnic bias, which uh, leads to um, insurrections all over the area. Here you have some examples of uh, locally grown violence. That is to say that um, the, the violence in the Sahel and the Sahara was not imported from the Middle East. It was locally grown and uh, the, it was used by terrorist groups from the Middle East or from uh, North Africa uh, to establish themselves there, to have subsidiaries in these countries and to also take refuge sometimes in those areas like was the case of Mr. Uh, Drugdale that was killed last year <clears throat> by the French uh, army. He had been defeated in Algeria in Kabylia. He had hidden for a long time and then he went back to the Sahara, which has always been a refuge for uh, people who were outlaws. <clears throat> so these uh, problems between the Tuareg and the Tubu that I first mentioned, or uh, from Boko Haram, are also the um, product of uh, very ancient um, uh, differences and, uh, and um, discrepancies. So um, Boko Haram, for instance, is the hair or attempts to be the hair of the old sultanates of Sokoto, of Bornu, I was shown before. And it also acts um, in, the, in the environmental um, threat that we can see. I was in Chad uh, recent years, seeing the drying of Lake Chad. I was supporting some uh, NGOs that were trying to help the uh, fishermen and the peasants around Lake Chad. But those people, their kids, they are prone to go to Boko Haram in order to find a living. So Islam in Africa is not a new phenomenon, of course. Uh, Islam has been there for for centuries, but uh, the old brotherhoods that were um, structuring Islam in that part of the world are now ailing, they are getting, um, they, they don't respond to the demands of the youth. 
or despite the fact that they are very influent in Senegal, for instance, or even in Mali. There was a coup last August in Mali by military, but they were supported. And the door was opened by an, um, a kind of brotherhood, a traditional brotherhood, who is taking now a new feature, which is very radical. So these people now who took power in Mali, where the biggest insurgency is taking place, they are going, we will see that, to deal with the insurgents in order to find a national solution for the problem, given the fact that France and other countries, uh, external countries, cannot be of any um, real uh, support. There was also a uh, uh, very um, uh, clear impact of the fall of Gaddafi in Libya. Gaddafi was paying for the budget, national budgets of all the Sahelian countries. He was paying the people and he was paying the administration. He was paying, he was giving a chance to uh, all these people to survive. It was not France that was giving them this, uh, this possibility. Uh, it was uh, Gaddafi. And the, the killing of Gaddafi is really a disaster for the whole of the Sahel. So you see now in Sahel, Toyota car. So the uh, Japanese uh, industry is uh, un unwillingly supporting the rebels because they have really developed a kind of love of Toyota cars that they use as they call them technicals. They put a machine gun on the, on the rear, another near the driver, and they are able to drive without any tarmac road for hundreds of kilometers a day. And then they, they, they join together and they attack a target, which can be a capital city like Khartoum in the past years or any other, um, other city in, uh, in other countries. So these, um, this, uh, this is a very cheap means somehow uh, to be very efficient and to uh, surprisingly the drones or the planes are not able to uh, fight and to counter these kind of strategies of tactics because the cars are driving uh, isolated. They don't only join at the end when they have to attack a, a target. <clears throat> so you have these uh, uh, maps that have been shown before and the one on Mali shows the diversity of the support that these um, um, groups are gaining. They are not only aligned with Al-Qaeda or with the Islamic State. They are also locally grown. Some of them have uh, local components and local, um, I mean, uh, aims. They are uh, based on uh, different uh, ethnic groups also, and they are not uh, led by anyone from, ex from outside. And you see that now there is this triangle uh, three borders, Arab between Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso. This is where the whole violence is now concentrated. Another point that is to mention um, is that uh, these groups are also locally funded because they are thriving on the uh, traffic like heroin in Nigeria or like cocaine all over West Africa. Now we have narco trade like uh, Guinea-Bissau, for instance, that their budget is funded by the narco uh, traffickers from uh, Colombia. And it comes from Colombia to Africa because the road of the Caribbean is closed by the US. So the drug goes into Europe to be re-exported to America. So Africa is a kind of gateway. And of course, the people who help these uh, groups, the planes or the cars or the trucks that are crossing the desert to North Africa, they are given, they are supported and financed by the um, terrorist groups. And it's also the groups, groups uh, roles of the migrants has, has been shown in previous uh, speakers. Uh, but now there is also in this part of the world, a concentration of insecurity. It's not everywhere. It's mainly the place which we saw before, the three borders, and also Adamawa 
and Bono in Northern Nigeria. And this doesn't hamper the uh, functioning of a state like Nigeria, which is exporting oil, nor is it um, disturbing the economy of Algeria or Morocco, nor even of some uh, African states who are now exploiting oil, for instance, where these terrorist groups are not involved yet, but they are more and more. We can see the, the threat and the anxiety of the coastal countries in West Africa, because they see that these terrorist groups can now have subsidi subsidiaries in the coastal states like Ivory Coast, maybe tomorrow Guinea, maybe Ghana, uh, they are uh, they are touching major interests, which is agricultural interests, of course, and also mineral wells. This is the future that I can um, think of for these groups. They are gaining more and more on the instability, increasing instability in this rich somehow rich countries of the coast, of the West African coast, from Senegal to Nigeria, and maybe to more to Gabon. And on the other side, we see also in, West, in Central Africa. Uh, I was there five years ago in Central Africa, also for humanitarian purpose. And I could see how the country is divided and how there is a, a, some more and more confrontation between Christians and Muslims. Also, those people in Central Africa were not Christian and not Muslims 100 years ago. So now there are new shifts uh, that are created, no rifts, which are somehow artificial and that uh, overlap the uh, tribal uh, divide or ethnic divide in those countries, which is the religious one. Now, the, what about the, the, the trial to stem this crisis by external forces? It's a failure. There is no doubt about it. France is there now for uh, over five years, since uh, 2013. But uh, it's obvious that even the increase of soldiers that are going to be sent, some 600 uh, new soldiers, will not make a difference because France is uh, focusing on trying to cut the heads of these groups, not to solve the root problems that are at the start of these uh, movements. So they are very proud and it's uh, making the headlines in the newspapers when one uh, chief is killed, but he's immediately replaced by other ones. I mean, there's no um, nothing to, to be uh, ensured about it. So now these um, countries, they are failed states. And this is um, for a large part the guilt of France because for now 50 years, these countries have been independent, but depending on France support, which is somehow aid for development, but without any effect on the ground. And uh, uh, now the, the, the root causes of the conflict, uh, somehow they will be more and more um, considered by other government that is this current government in those failed states. And I, I see it as a, a proof uh, with these um, new um, moves in Mali last year. Now in Burkina Faso, where there was a presidential election, that uh, uh, both countries are starting to discuss with the rebels they understand that there is no way out through military intervention. They accept the aid, they, they play the game, but at the same time, and uh, France is uh, quite uh, unhappy about that, they are trying to deal, find a solution which is compromised with the rebels or whatever they are, from Al-Qaeda, from uh, Islamic State, doesn't matter. There is a mood for dialogue that is increasing in this particular uh, problem of West Africa. So this is, as I mentioned before, a growing concern from coastal state. There were some attacks, some uh, um, assassinations uh, also of foreigners near Abidjan in Ivory Coast. And this raises uh, a big concern because these countries are very important for our economies in Europe 
or elsewhere. And um, so the, the problem will be more and more um, solved maybe by uh, this kind of discussion that we try to have with rebel groups uh, back in Darfur in the, um, in the early uh, 2000s. And I thank you for that. Thank you very much for, for, for your excellent presentation of, of, of the, the, the entire you know, continent. <laughs> so, but uh, um, the, uh, I'm, I'm I, so, um, oh, uh, we, uh, we have already used up the time we uh, allowed, but uh, uh, so we, we go, go on to, to you know, directly question the, Answered and so to two previous you know uh, presentations and presentation by John Psycho and also presentation by Marco Lavergne. Uh, so.